they have the best dessert ever, the creme brulee. <sighs> Hello, my name's Jeshi, out here with Nylon from London in Paris. Uh, just played a show by the boom for Pitchfork. Head inside the vice and explodes. I don't know, it's always a hard question. I just think for me, it's like I try not to pay too much attention for it. I listen to like a wide array of like different music. And for me, it's just about like kind of like what feels good to me in the moment. I do interviews a lot of the time. People are like, oh, so like, is it rap? Is it not? And it's like, I think it's just like, it's just what feels good to me. It's like inspired by all the things that I listen to and all the things I think are great. Sing my breakfast, you know what I mean? Up and down, how my mood swing it deep. Probably since I was like 11, 12 years old, like, I met a lot of people when I started school who were, uh, you know, recording music at home, at friends' houses, and it just kind of really amazed me. I was like, this is crazy. People can actually just make music themselves. I always thought it was reserved for like, I don't know, like celebrities or people with loads of money. So it just kind of really sparked my mind and have always kind of made stuff since then. It's just like a natural progression, I guess. So universal credit, um, if you don't know, it's like the, I guess the benefit system in the UK where, you know, if you're, if you're unemployed and you don't have, you know, much money, it's what the government gives people to support them. So at the time when I made the album, I was on universal credit and I was broke and, can I swear? I was broke as fuck um, and had no money. Um, so it was kind of inspired by that and just kind of like, a nod to the way people perceive people who, you know, are struggling or don't have stuff. I wanted to kind of shine a light on it and, you know, make it seem human um, because I think it could be any of us at any time. Me to the brink, looking in your eyes, yeah. I mean, it's similar to the, I guess, the idea for the albums. And people always look at people who are helped by the government and, like, you know, they look at them like they're lazy or, you know, they should do more for themselves or, like, these kind of things. And they act as if they've, like, been, they get a million pounds a month, which is not what you get. And I wanted to highlight the amount of money that you get and put it on a massive check. So it's kind of, like, ironic. And I think a lot of the time, the best way you can get through to people is with humour. I think it's it's really hard for like young kids now because I just think the internet really like makes things difficult for people. You know, I have like young sisters and I think the problem is that like, you know, when I was young, when I was like young teens or whatever, you know, I, I just like lived in a bubble and I was like with my friends. And I didn't really have any frame of reference beyond that. But nowadays, you know, kids, you know, they look on, on the internet and they look at like all these people, you know, you're looking at like Bella Hadid and this person, this person who like their life seems so perfect and they have money and they look great. And like, it, it just always makes people feel really small because they're always looking at people who everything seems perfect. And I think probably most of these people's lives aren't perfect. Perfect, but they only ever see the side of it that is. They have so much more information. I think they're so much more switched on. You know, when I was young, I didn't really care about the problems in the world because I didn't know about the problems in the world. I think it's amazing. I saw this with my little sisters and they, they check me on things. You know, I might say something and they'll be like, you can't say that or like whatever. Because it's, it's just like, when I grew up, it's like, we didn't have all of these things. We just didn't have the information. It doesn't mean people are bad people, but young people nowadays, they have like a lot of information and they know like what's going on in Iran or what's going on in like all over the world. I didn't know that. I knew what was going on in the mile radius of where I lived, and that was it. Yeah, lost in. Jealousy made me punch the wall until my fist broke, pinging off the wall. Like I grew up with like a house of women. You know, I had my mum, my nan, and sisters. You know, respect women a lot and see how much they go through, and a lot of the time don't get credit for how much they do for their families and just for people in general. I think it's important. You know, I think it's important to see the side of how much women put in, and a lot of the time don't get credit for something in my mind and something that shaped me a lot as a young adult in the world. I'm Paris. <laughs> It's so bad, I probably sound like such a tourist, but I just always go to uh, Bouillon Republic or Bouillon Pigalle. They have the best dessert ever, the creme brulee. <sighs> it's so good. I remember the first place I went to, was a bit Chartier. That's where I had snails for the first time, escargot. It's, it's good, it tastes like garlic. <laughs> Honestly, I'm a simple man. When I was young, I, I used to want like to be like crazy rich and stuff. I mean, the biggest thing for me is like, I wake up every day, do what I love, and I spent a long time in my life not doing that and doing things I hated, so I'm just grateful. Don't listen to anyone. No one knows anything. I don't care if you're a manager, label, PR person, radio blogger. No one knows anything. We're all just trying, and I think what you need to do is just go with your gut, because at the end of the day, if everything fails and you fail doing what you love that's fine if everything goes wrong and you fail because you listen to everyone else i think you will like take that to your deathbed busy nylon love